Hey, thanks for watching another video from WeldingTipsAndTricks.com. Today we're TIG welding some 11 gauge 6061 aluminum. That's roughly an eighth of an inch thick. I'll be showing this clear number five cup. Some hand placement, propping, feeding wire. First thing I'm going to do is ball the electrode. This Dynasty has a ball setting on it. I'm starting off with an electrode prep just about like I would use for steel. But I'm going to put a little bit of a rounded tip on it. Not a Tootsie Roll Pop type big ball. Just a little bit of a ball where there's still a little bit of taper left on the electrode. I've been noticing that the cleaning action seems a little bit better when there's a little bit of a rounded tip on there like this. So that's what I'm experimenting with today. I'm using 2% lanthanated. That's pretty much what I use for everything. Here are the settings if you want to pause it for those. On a vertical uphill aluminum weld, you, you've got to hold your hand a little bit different. And you've got to figure out a way that you can feed the wire and feed a lot of it. This is one way. Next is figuring out a place to get comfortable and place to prop. This is a relatively small piece and even though it's about 14 inches long or so, the heat's going to saturate this thing really quickly. It's going to get really hot and really quick. And so I've got my TIG finger on and I'm going to use it not only for a, a heat shield but for a little glide mechanism. I could clamp something to the table to prop alongside this thing but it's sometimes it's just nice to have the prop in your pocket anytime you need it and it does slide along pretty nicely on something like this. On a butt joint like this you want full penetration and, and one thing that's really important to get full penetration is cleaning those edges. I mean cleaning them to, to bright metal not not with an abrasive disc but with a file or even a, a router bit or something like that that doesn't leave anything behind, doesn't leave any embedded grit or a layer of oxide or smeared in oxide or anything like that makes a big difference on the full penetration. I'm welding this this piece in thirds. That's a technique called backstep welding, which I'm welding the top third and then the middle third and then the bottom third. So I'm I'm progressing in I'm, I'm progressing downward, but I'm welding uphill. And that's just something that is a good technique to use sometimes. You have to figure out the best length of each segment just from experience. As I approach the previous weld, I need to slow down, let the heat soak in it a little bit, add less and less filler, overlap it a little bit, and continue to add filler as I taper off and swirl the arc to prevent a crater. Here's the backside. You can see it consuming that previous bead a little bit as I overlap it. This one penetrated pretty nicely. I'll show you a little bit later in the video one that I did not clean properly and show you what happened there. All right, let's do the very last little bit of this thing. This clear cup is really helping me film this so you can see what's going on here too, but it, it also helps in just seeing where you're going. Sometimes when you're welding down into a corner, it's good to be able to even look through the cup. Not always necessary, but it's a good feature. Once again, I swirled the arc as I tapered the uh, amperage. It's easy to leave a little crater crack. Sometimes they're hard to see unless you get some magnification too, but you got you to gotta be concerned about that when you're stopping on an aluminum butt joint. So the first one of these that I tried did not turn out so well, and there's two reasons mainly. Part of it was just me, out of practice. Part of it was cleaning. I'm going to show all that now and what I did to correct those two things. Let's do it. My first try at one of these just didn't feel comfortable. I tried holding the torch sideways like that, this way. Uh, it just felt awkward. The other thing was I, I just sort of in a hurry knocked this edge clean with a flap disc. You can see a line in the very center here. It's just pushing the, a layer of oxide through the backside. Sometimes a flap, a flap disc will just swirl and bury existing oxides into the aluminum and makes it really hard to to get a good looking penetration side to that. And I should have known that. I just got in a little bit of a hurry. And that combined with me just not having done this in a long time, just taking me a while to get back in the groove. So I decided just to go ahead and weld as many of these as it takes to where it feels comfortable again. And that's kind of what I did for this video. That doesn't look horrible. Just a close up of it will show you how inconsistent it is. Just getting a little bit squiggly here and there. Just didn't feel right. 
So before I get any more practice, I decided to try to set the camera up and give you a view like right over my right shoulder, like if you had a helmet on looking over my shoulder. That feels a little bit a little bit better. Things are starting to feel better. This is the way I would probably weld sitting at a chair on a bench if I had to do some uh, vertical uphill. But now it's time just to get some hood time in, just to get some good old-fashioned arc time, some good practice in. And so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to run the whole length, try not to even stop, just stack a bead right next to the other bead, and keep doing this until it just sort of feels second nature. And it gets my wire feeding hand up to speed, gets it back in practice. Nothing, nothing like some aluminum to do that for you. The good thing about practice, too, is you, you don't have to worry about messing anything up. So I can turn the torch all kinds of different ways, figure out different ways to prop, different ways to look at it, maybe even try different filler metal sizes or different angles where I'm feeding into the puddle. Anyway, I can feel it getting a little bit better every bead that I run. Of course, the piece is getting super hot, but my fingers aren't. It's starting to come together. It's starting to feel a lot better. And I'm trying all kinds of different different ways to feed rod, different ways to prop, different angles, different line of sight. You name it. This is sort of like uh, the video that I did a good while back. I called it the aluminum drill, except I was just running beads flat on the table. This is good, too, in shaking the rust off on an out-of-position weld. Really all it is is stacking beads, but it's a little bit more than that. It's thinking about, okay, what went wrong? What could go better? Should I, should I change filler wire size? Should I extend the electrode a little bit further? Should I stick it up in the cup a little bit further? Should I, should I experiment with another way of feeding the wire that works better? Can I be a little bit more comfortable? So yes, it's just stacking beads, but not just haphazardly. It's thinking about it. Once again, here's that edge that was cleaned with a flap disc, and I don't really think it was even a clean flap disc. It had probably been used on other materials before. And here's, here's the one cleaned with a clean file. Made a lot of difference. This is a 17 air-cooled torch like I used in this video today, and I used the, the Furic Alley 5 number 17 torch kit. I also have them for 9 and 20 style torches. I think they're a big help in, in just improving visibility. Especially for someone like me, um, I'm uh, in my 60s now, it just helped me to see things a lot better. You can learn more at weldmonger.com. That is my online store. That's how I support these videos. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.